So I'm not too concerned if that you can label the rows and columns on the periodic table. Uh, you should know the difference between the main group elements and the uh, transition metals. As we said, the main group elements are the S block and the P block. Most periodic tables, this, this one does not, but most periodic tables have a Roman numeral or a number next to the letter A, so you know which is the main group, and then you have Bs here in the transition group, so you can distinguish them pretty easily. What we uh, also will find out is when you have a periodic table that has this number next to the letter A in the main group, that tells you how many valence electrons the element has. That's a quick way to judge how many valence electrons an element has. It works for group A elements. So 1A, 2A, 3A, not group B elements. Uh, we know the noble gases, transistor metals. We'll talk more about them a little bit later. Those are the group B. They're in the uh, middle of the periodic table there. They're they have electrons in a D subshell, so that means their ability to gain electrons and lose electrons and share electrons is a little bit different from the group A elements. That's why we distinguish between them. Um, and then the F block uh, is also similar to the D block in reactivity, but those elements are a lot less common in nature, so we're not going to spend a lot of time <laughs> on them. So if we look at the electron configuration of elements that are in a group or in a vertical column, we find that they have similar patterns. Right? So every element here in the first column has one electron in an S subshell. There are also one electron more in their atom than a noble gas has. So as we'll go through here, we'll find that since the noble gases are very stable, they have a special arrangement of electrons and protons in the nucleus. A special arrangement that gives them uh, a lot of positive charge compared to how much shielding there is. So the valence electrons in the noble gas are held pretty close, uh, pretty strongly to the nucleus. Compared to the amount, the large amount, relative large amount of positive charge there is in the noble gas, there's not a lot of shielding. So the valence electrons are held pretty tight. So other elements will tend to lose electrons often to have the same number as a noble gas, or if they're over here on this side of the parent table, they might gain electrons to have the same number as a noble gas. You see that a lot as we go through. That's a big factor, even bigger than shielding. So we've been talking about so far, we said shielding is the biggest factor. Shielding is always a factor, though. So if I want to compare any two elements on the pair table, if I want to compare their ionization energies or electron affinities or size or whatever, shielding I always need to consider. But the noble gas configuration will only be in play in certain examples, as we said about the quiz question, whether or not an atom's electron affinity or ionization er energy is affected by whether the uh, the noble gas configuration is only going to be in play if the atom has a noble gas configuration to begin with or makes a noble gas configuration after the change in number of electrons occurs for it. So if I have you know, something in the middle of the periodic table adding or gaining a couple electrons, it's nowhere near a noble gas. I cannot invoke that argument to say something about its electron affinity or ionization. Um, so the valence electrons, as we said, are all the electrons in the outermost energy level, not just the electrons in the outermost subshell. So when you're counting valence electrons, there's a, sh a shortcut. If it's a group A element in the S block or P block, just look to see whether it's in column 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8A. That will tell you how many valence electrons there are. So any element in 7A will have 7 valence electrons when it's neutral. But if you can't take the shortcut if you're working with the group B element, or you want to check the shortcut and make sure you've got the right answer, just draw out the electron configuration. Find out what the highest energy level is that actually has electrons, that's your valence level. All the electrons in that level are valence electrons. Right? So if this element here 
If this element had some electrons in the 3D, then the 3s, 3p, and 3d, all of those would be valence electrons. If this element had some electrons in the 3s, 3p, 3d, and 4s, then only the 4s electrons would be the valence electrons because that's, that becomes now the outer level. If I have electrons out to and including the fourth level, then the third level is no longer the valence level. So valence level is important because as, we, as we'll see later, when we're starting to draw molecules and predict how, when ions are going to form, it's the valence electrons that are going to be rearranged when an atom uh, becomes more stable and when it comes in contact with other atoms. So this is just a review for electron uh, configurations here. So maybe we'll just do one of these. Maybe we'll do the one with 37 electrons. Again, we can use this chart here following the arrows, winding our way through this system using the arrows, or we can use the periodic table, recognize where the S, P, D, and F blocks are, which I think is easier for me. That way I don't have to worry about remembering the table or finding the table when I want to do an electron configuration. So if I have 37 electrons, I'd start close to the nucleus. So I go 1S, so I'm in the F block, that's the first full row, that includes hydrogen and helium two electrons, then I go to the 2s, so I'm in the second row down, fill the second energy level, or the second, uh, it's the first subshell of the second energy level, there's two columns, so the 2s in the s block can hold two electrons, then I go over to the p blocks, there's six columns, so that's still in the second energy level, that p uh, subshell can hold six electrons, so that's 10 of my 37, I keep going, after neon, the next element is sodium, it's in the third energy level in the S block, so 3S. There are two columns in that S block, so it can hold up to two electrons. That subshell can. Then I go across. I'm still not into the D block yet. I still am above that, so I go to the 3S. I'm sorry, 3P. So I can fill that up. Now I've got 18 electrons, so I still need nine more. After the 3P, which is argon, the next element is potassium. That is in the S block, in the fourth row down. So 4S, fill that up. And so now I have 20 total electrons. Still have 17 more. I think I miscounted a second ago. Um, so I gotta keep going. So the next comes the D block, it's the 3D, right? The first energy level that has a D subshell is the third energy level. So that can be filled so now I have 30 total electrons in there. I've got seven more. So after I get to the end of the D block here, now I'm back in the P block. I already did 3P, and this is the fourth row down, so now I'm in the 4P. I can hold 4P6. And then I've got one more electron now for a total of 37. And so once I finish the 4P, I go down to the 5S and do 5S1. So that should get me to element 37 if I had 37 electrons. If I wanted to abbreviate that, if I have 37 electrons, which would be rubidium, I would just go back to the nearest noble gas. That would represent the first 36. And then after that, the next element is just that one extra electron. So those two configurations mean the same, same thing. So that element is a main group element because it's in the S block. S block and P block are a main group element.